A number of positive cases in Sydney hospitals has put them on high alert with strict visitor restrictions in place. But the blanket rule is leaving many patients isolated from loved ones when they need them the most. Very, very traumatic. I nearly lost my life on the table yesterday. I didn't get to meet my family for five hours because of just traumatic experiences of having labour. We're just sitting here waiting for you, Mama. Isn't that right? You mean? Okay. A traumatic birth and lockdown, but first time parents Nerida and Nick are counting themselves lucky. If I did not have my support partner, which is my partner, with me in there, I don't know how these mums are doing it without them. Across Sydney, thousands of loved ones are being locked out from hospitals in lockdown. And it's not fair, not fair for a first time mum, not fair for a first time family. Oh, g'day Dad. Look at the little fella. Hey. <laughs> Nepean hospital staff helped Nerida and Nick battle through visitor exemption red tape. Nick wasn't allowed into the birthing suite, but he did get to comfort his son Koa while Nerida received life-saving treatment. Love you, darling. Can't wait to see you. It is literally people that are higher up that need to stop and stare back and be like, look, these people are humans. They need support. The Sydney lockdown means thousands of support people are being turned away from hospital doors. Yet despite this, Liverpool Hospital in Sydney's southwest was plunged into COVID chaos. A pregnant mum tested positive, forcing staff into self-isolation and non-essential surgeries to be postponed. What do you make of this blanket rule? It's crap. It's not by case by case. It is general everyone is discriminated against. This issue has triggered a passionate debate across the country, with Australian women wanting their voices heard. Some of them are joining me now on Zoom. Sarah, you've started a petition on change.org, which has garnered almost 30,000 signatures. Why do you think there's so much support? At any given moment, these restrictions could be put in place in any state or any region, and every, the advice is changing by the minute. And Cynthia is due to give birth next week. Yeah, I, every day I watch um, the news update and I get a little bit anxious depending on the case numbers. Overnight it's been reported that a pregnant mum who went into Liverpool Hospital for a C-section tested positive to COVID. Has that changed your view at all? Not at all. Look, the number of people that go in and out of the hospitals, um, whether they're nursing staff, whether they're anaesthetists, surgeons, administrators, um, patients, the number is always very high. Um, I feel like they are prioritising COVID over every single um, other health condition and it, it's it's really hard. It's really hard, especially when you go through something traumatic like I went through and not having anyone there. Because one person will tell you one thing and then the other will tell you the next and then you just don't know what's happening. I've heard stories of women waiting this last week over 12 hours for Panadol because they're just, the wards are so short staffed. It's not fair on the women and it's not fair on the midwives working there. Maddie is a midwife who's faced her own struggles this week. So to not know exactly how he's doing is really stressful. Really stressful. <laughs> yeah. Denied visiting rights to tend to her hubby Ant, who's enduring a slow recovery from a brain injury. He was involved in a horrific car accident days after the couple learned Maddie was pregnant. I can't tell you how many times I've cried. Yeah. Daily. Like. <laughs> Maddie's bedside vigil at Westmead Hospital was ended last Tuesday by the tough new COVID restrictions. Any family member of, you know, these patients within brain injury unit rehabilitations, they would all tell you the same thing, that, um, you know, they play a massive role in the rehabilitation process. Today, the same hospital confirmed a staff member had tested positive to COVID-19. Because she wasn't able to connect 
A current affair reached out to the New South Wales Health and, Minister and um, Maddie's local Hawkesbury MP, Robin Preston. Um, special care and special treatment is, is crucial to um, patients' recovery and Maddie was that medicine that he needed. Hiya, Maddie. <laughs> Two hours after this yeah. conversation, Good Maddie news. received a reprieve. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I got approval to see ants. <laughs> the last thing we want to do is exploit our loved ones. Um, and to have to go and share like all your story just so you can see them and get the approval that you know is deserved is um, yeah a bit frustrating. Maddie's situation and Anthony's situation was taken on merit rather than a blanket one size fits all rejection. So are you preparing now for a, a lot more calls coming to your office <laughs> seeking help from yourself? Well, look, we got a great outcome with Maddie and Anthony. Um, I'm happy to represent uh, any constituent that comes forward and needs my help. That's my job. That's what I'm there to do, to advocate for my people.